Hello friends, welcome to the Baramel Show. Another video on the coronavirus. Uh, it's definitely a, a very a hot topic. We are all concerned, we are all worried about it. I kind of spend a little too much time looking at this data. Uh, but this is a great data set that was brought to my attention on Twitter. I love Twitter, get some great information from Balaji uh, Srinivasan. And um, he uh, found this uh, New York City health data, which is tracking, in this case, influenza-like illnesses. So this is like basically the flu, and they've been tracking it, and they offer this data to anybody. It's publicly available, so great thanks to New York City for its transparency and for the ease of access to get to this data. But uh, uh, Srinivan is, is stating that there is this unusual spike here going on. It looks different. It's all the kind of the flu spikes that you have, you know, at the beginning of each year, and there's something uh, different going on here, which is very interesting. There's a spike and then there's a secondary spike. So let's explore this. Let me show you how to explore this in Python because I think it's fascinating data. It's definitely an important topic right now. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Valmel Show. My name is Manuel Amonateki. Please sign up to the newsletter upper left of the page uh, so we can keep in touch, so you can get the newsletter and get classes and free deals I have on a regular basis. Uh, also, give some love to this video. Give it some thumbs up. It's always much appreciated. And let's get down to business. So the data is made available, like I said, at New York City Health. They have a great uh, page. It's part of the syndromic, syndromic surveillance data. A quick word about that, public health surveillance. A lot of hospitals, doctors report, um, have to re report some of these uh, these findings, and they're all aggregated. In this case, uh, uh, this information is made publicly available by New York City Health, which is great. The website is easy to use. You, um, The link, of course, is in the document, and, and the code is there as well. You'll see a link in the uh, description. Um, so you can choose different syndromes like asthma, diarrhea, influenza-like. So we're going to do influenza-like is basically things that are uh, like the flu or fever or a sore throat. It gives you explanation. We're going to go with a maximum date range, count as metric, and we're going to aggregate it by day. We want to basically get to the chart that was posted on, um, on, on Twitter. And then you keep scrolling down, there's information, interesting information about the data, but more importantly, there's the download button. So go ahead, hit the download button, download it to your local machine, and there we're going to be able to analyze it. So let me just jump to the code. Again, the link to this uh, Jupyter Extract is in your uh, description to this video. And uh, I recommend is you copy it and then you cut and paste the code as you move along in your own Jupyter Notebook. So download the data. Here is a link to get to the data. Download it to your local machine. We're going to import the usual uh, libraries, matplotlib, pandas, numpies, and date time. And we're going to read it. So uh, it comes out as a underscore export underscore ql underscore cross tab dot csv. You got to do a few special things to get the data. Uh, you got it's, it's tab delimited, so you got uh, you know exp um, uh, set that up. And the encoding is utf dash sixteen. Otherwise, you're going to get all this weird weird uh, special characters. And let's take a peek at what we have. So the names don't make much sense, and there's a lot of repeated data. Syndrome data uh, are inherently blah blah blah. Influenza like right? That's what the selection. So all the the entire uh, feature is the same so we're going to remove this and you have other features which we don't really know what they are or we can tell what they are but uh they're not very well explained so let's clean that up briefly we see we have 53,000 rows five features we are going to keep only the features we want and we're going to rename it by calling the uh you know in our case our data frame name dot columns and and casting these names changing these names to area borough age date and count that's what we want we're going to uh, cast the date to uh, a date time. It's an object. It's important to casting the date time as matplotlib will be able to do a lot of nicer things when it displays them. Um, you know, uh, so you want to kind of you know make sure that matplotlib knows that date is a date time. Uh, we're going to sort everything in ascending order by date. We want things to be in order. Uh, and then we are going to uh, clean up the count. The count comes out as a string out of the box because it's got commas in the numbers. We're going to remove all these commas and then force it to a float and then see what we have. So here is kind of the cleaned up version. We now have an area. We know there are two areas. It's very easy to do. We can um, actually let's do it here. We see area, we have uh, different boroughs, we have 45,000 rows, and citywide we have 7,000 rows. Um, borough, we have um, the different boroughs in New York City. Uh, age group, what do we have? Let's see, age group, we have, you know, uh, 51704 plus 65. So this would be very interesting to explore. We are only going to look at all age groups to keep things simple here and keep this video short. Uh, and then date and count, okay, that's pretty straightforward. Um, now, I want to only look at 
the citywide. I don't want to look at each borough individually. And I don't want to look at all age groups. I want to look at all age groups. I don't want to look at all age trenches. Though I think it would be very interesting to explore an age trench to see if there's any anomaly between, uh, let me jump back to the chart here, uh, right? Between these peaks are any age group that's particularly uh, behaving differently than the previous age groups, right? These are normal flu spikes. Why is this acting differently? It looks like there's a lot more ups and downs and there's a secondary spike. Is it this particular age group that's doing that or not, right? As we know, um, uh, is this is for, for people who are at risk or older people, this is a, a, a deadly disease. Uh, and maybe they're the ones that get, you know, go to the doctors or the hospitals. It'd be interesting to, to break that down, which we're not going to do here, but something to do. Uh, we are now going to, uh, you know, um, I'm going to group. So we, we basically create a subset of citywide and all age groups. So now we have a smaller set of the data. And we are also going to um, uh, drop this some NAs here. I want to remove them. And we'll do description here. So we're left with uh, uh, 1,531 rows now. Now we have some more work to be done still. I want to uh, make sure that uh, the um, uh, the uh, group by to see basically we're going to group it by uh, area, borough, age, and date. Area, borough, age, and date, and we're going to take the sum of the counts. This because we've taken a subset, it should be the same thing, but it's always a good habit. And now we know that right for citywide all age groups for this date we had this many who had some influenza like uh, you know uh, symptoms. And that's what we're doing, right? And this is basically showing you every day. And that's what we're going to basically plot. Um, we're also going to, uh, actually, let me do something here. Let's let me do a plot right now before we do the feature engineering. There we go. So, um, and I think I can do this. Yes. So here we're going to uh, create a plot, a subplot, 16 by 10, perfect for, uh, for this size plot plot. And we are going to uh, put on the x-axis the date, on the y-axis the counts, and we're going to title it, you know, influenza like illness, uh, New York City, uh, wide, all ages, and we're going to plot it. And here we have it, right? So we can compare that our plot now looks more or less the same that we saw on Twitter. That's what's important. We want to make sure we're looking at this unusual spike, right? Something we haven't seen before. Um, and here we clearly see, right, beginning of the year, right, starting like in January or even December, we have these flu-like spikes and this secondary spike. So, so far, this is looking good. Let's do something a little bit different. Uh, let's dig a little deeper. So, what we think we can do is we can do some feature engineering, and I want to get the year and the month, meaning I want to create a feature that has the year and the month. And uh, let me break this down so it's so I can explain to you what I'm doing. So I'm basically going to create two new uh, variables, two new features. A year column and a month column. So the year is simply the extraction of the year from the date by calling dot dt dot year. And same thing for date is dot dt, sorry, for, for uh, month is dt dot month. And we're assigning them to year and to month. So now we have two new features, right? The year and the month. We basically extracted those out of the date. And what I'm going to do now, this is the interesting part, is I am going to create the totals for each year. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to do another group by by area, borough, age, and year. I'm going to say, give me the uh, the 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 count. Uh, give uh, uh, from the from the count column, give me the sum. Right? That's what I want. I want the sum for each year, and I'm going to assign it back to year. I'm going to do the same thing with month year. Uh, month year, I'm going to have to create my own new feature, which is simply a concatenation of um, actually, that's not going to work. Of year with the underscore and month, so that's going to take the the numeric year, cast it to a string, add an underscore, and stick to it the month as a string as well. So now we're going to have basically this new feature called month year, and I'm going to overwrite that month year with the totals, the sums for each month year. So we'll have January 2016 a total, a sum. Uh, February 2016, a sum. And that's going to give us a little granularity as to what's going on in terms of totals, right? And you'll see what I'm doing here. So let me just put those in memories and let me show you what we have. So now, here now we have, right, we have these new features. We have uh, the totals for 2016, and you can see it's here, right? These are the total counts we had in 2016 and the total counts for each month. So um, uh, it's, uh, right, uh, so. Uh, uh, 2016 January we had 87,000 uh, reports, 
and for the month of January, right, this is month of January, we can see it's one, we had 8,594, um, 8, right? So that's how it works. So now we can plot these, right? So remember, here this was a simplistic chart. It's a little hard. This is basically day by day. Now we can overlay this. So I'm going to overlay this. It's pretty easy to do. So I'm going to create, a uh, again, a 16 by 10 chart. And I'm going to create a bar chart out of this, right, where I'm going to show do the, the date and the year. So this is going to be our year sums, color in gray, and uh, you know uh, label it as history. But uh, I'm not showing the labels here. I'm going to open a second axis. So now we're going to have two y axes. The first one is the totals by year. The second one is the daily data, the counts, and that one's going to be in cyan, a light blue. And again, we're going to title it the same way we did before. I'm going to plot this. This takes a little time because uh, the the bar charts take time. There's a lot of them. But what we do get is actually a very interesting chart. Let me just remove the header so we can see it here. This is very interesting because we now have, these are total, right? This is total for 2016, total for 2017, 18, 19, and interestingly, 20. So what I want to bring, what I think is interesting here is we are over, we are, we are just barely in March, the beginning of March, uh, mid-March actually, uh, uh, March 19th at the, the time I think is they're doing this video, and we are over halfway uh, through the total, right? Which in a way makes uh, 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 may not be that alarming because we know that the, the, the most of the counts come at the beginning of the year, right? At the beginning of the year and a bit at the end of the year, um, and it's, it tapers down you know, throughout the year. But this to me is still interesting that we have that many so far. So as you know, we also did the totals by month, not by year. So let's plot those. Same deal. We're going to create the bar chart. And instead of doing the year, we're going to do the month year. So again, it's going to be a total for January 2016, the total for February 2016. Same deal. Let me run that in memory. It also takes a lot of time because of the bar chart. And here it is. So here we start seeing something is going on, right? It's definitely the peaks are higher and we... Uh, uh, we see kind of this peak fairly, you know, it looks like similar to 2018 we have in 2020, but there's a lot of it, right? And now we're starting to see this secondary peak coming up. So this is definitely something to, uh, I would recommend people to play around with different age group and also get this data on a regular basis, right? Get it in and wait for two weeks, get it again, plot it again and see if this is completely, if we're starting to see another big spike of counts coming up, right? Uh, as far as we can tell, the first spike looked like, you know, something similar that we saw uh, in 2018, uh, even uh, more than 2018, but, you know, similar height, maybe this is a little higher. But what's worrisome is a secondary spike, and that's when we're starting to get all the reports of COVID-19 uh, in New York. And, uh, you know, New York and, and in the U.S., New York is one of the you know largest counts of COVID-19 so far. So definitely uh, something to, to follow. And this plot will allow you to see if um, the reports of flu uh, can be used to kind of infer if, uh, you know, there is something going on in terms of, you know, this new uh, COVID-19 can be seen uh, somewhere in this data. Really interesting data, regardless of if, you know, we don't know if it's COVID or not. We just want to see if there's something abnormal happening, then, you know, we can all, the only conclusion we can say with this data, is there something abnormal going on? Because until we have uh, a, a COVID-19 syndrome in the drop down, this is, it's all right, just guesses at this point. Regardless, this data is super interesting. Uh, Health-wise, again, a big congratulations to New York City for making this so easy to get to, so easy to download, so easy to bring it to Python and to R and to whatever language you like working in and doing your own charts. So you can also get all those charts. Again, the code is in the description. Um, what has changed since my first video on COVID-19, uh, which I don't know if you remember, I hope you saw it, but uh, here it is. It's... Um, uh, here is the here is a label, right? Uh, the difference is here. Uh, I'm making these videos in Spain, and here when I did this video, um, uh, the we were still allowed to move around to to walk freely. Uh, the difference, so that's why I did this with my, you know, I filmed myself doing this video. Uh, here, let me just jump to it so we can see it. 
59 so we can look at right so here you have me uh, filming it the difference here is this video uh, we are now stuck at home and i don't have my gear to do the filming but i can still do these but without filming myself i don't have my lights i don't have the green screen but i can still do this so that's big difference between one video and another and it's interesting because this was done i did this video on march 4th we are you know merely 15 days after this suddenly we're all stuck at home and i'm thinking that more, more and more people are going to be stuck at home until this uh, coronavirus is under control a uh, quick plug for my material you can go to uh if you haven't taken the the COVID, if you haven't seen the covid uh, video take it because i do show you how to make these cool animated video uh, maps uh and show you where to get a great data set with the counts by country uh on kaggle so highly recommend that one uh but i also have classes if you're interested go to hit the classes button and you'll see my different classes. I have a machine learning track, I have a market analysis track where we look at the fundamentals of the market and two entrepreneur tracks. And you can also get the super bundle where you get it all. These are all video walkthroughs, uh, hours and hours of classes where we do this exact same thing I showed you here, exploration of interesting data sets, exploration of machine learning, um, projects and in a lot of these I like to port my projects to the web so uh, graduate from a Jupyter notebook this is a Jupyter notebook and port it to the web so the entire world can enjoy your work not just people like you and me that know how to use a Jupyter notebook but everybody that can access information on a phone remember 4 billion people over 4 billion people are on the internet and the internet right now is super important uh, when we have when we're all stuck at home all the only link to the to the to the outside world is social media is the internet very important uh, and then you can take your your whatever you're learning whatever information you have whatever machine learning models you have and port them to the web this is one thing that's very important to me I love doing that um, and uh, this is actually what we did in, in ML web, web makers right we we like to uh, whatever we're building, we like to finish with something on the phone so that everybody um, can enjoy your work. Again, thanks for watching and stay safe out there. And hopefully, you know, we get over this quickly uh, and, you know, we can go get back to normal and I can start making my videos by, by filming myself with the green screens. Thanks for watching.